Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 terrifying fishing discoveries we should have thrown back, AKA left alone. I'm never swimming again, let's do this. Number 10, the Wolverine fish. Hugh Jackman, if you're watching this, I love you. Also, this one's for you, pal, let's do it. This year alone, there have been over 200 discoveries of freshwater fish. 200 more reasons why I'm not swimming in fresh water. Here we go. One of which is the X-Men inspired fish, the Hoplancistrus Wolverine. Yeah, these fish have strong lateral curved spikes called odontodes tucked under their gills and they can extend and jab their prey with these prongs, these three prongs, hence the name Wolverine Fish. It's kind of cute, I don't know. I like the claws, which is terrifying for sure, but they're tiny claws, right? Just swimming around, Julius Caesaring people in the water. Number nine, the frilled shark. Okay, back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this uh, dinosaur, I guess, the frilled shark. Let's talk about him. Lurking about 870 meters below the surface, this guy looks like an eel at first, you know, and then you get closer and it's not, it's even scarier. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long, which is like, you know, a foot taller than this lanky shark here. And they can fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't need to see anything to mess you up. Unless you're uh, skinny dipping, you don't need to worry about the frilled shark. He's not really buzzing around anywhere, thankfully. Frilled sharks are only found a mile below the surface. Have you ever dealt with one of these? Are you a diver? Have you seen a shark in person? I saw a shark once, but it was a, uh, it was a nurse shark. Also, it was uh, one of those like aquarium things where like you can like go in. I don't know, I was terrified. Number eight, the walking worm. Nice, I had the same nickname in high school. Let's talk about them. Meet the Hallucigenia fortis, named by Simon Conway Morris in 1979. Now, Conway Morris named it Hallucigenia fortis because of its bizarre and dreamlike quality. Isn't that dreamlike and nice and lovely? No, it's more bizarre. There were over 109 specimens of these strange aquatic creatures found, and they range in size from half centimeter to three centimeters long. Not too large, but still terrifying nonetheless. And since it was an invertebrate, it lacked a spine. Also, just like me, I'm like Gumby. You know what this, I don't know what this is. Oh, hear that crack? Defining features of the walking worm, as its name suggests, were these tentacles that protruded out from the body, which it would use to walk around. It had spikes that it maybe walked on. How terrifying is that? In 2015, scientists realized where its real head was. Yeah, we thought a fossilized stain was its head for like 35 years, and then in 2015, we found its real head. And it looks like it's grinning and it has two eyes. So dare I say worse than the stain observation. Number seven, the ruling squid. For ages now, sailors from Norway and Greenland have shared tales of a giant sea monster. Now with tentacles big enough to pluck you out of your boat. Doesn't this sound a little familiar? In 1857, Danish naturalist Jepeta Strinstrup found a large squid beak. And soon after, he was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas. So he got all these gross fishy parts, just a nice stinky table of work. And then he thought to himself, could this be the Kraken? These parts were a part of a species called a giant squid. It's called Architeuthis ducks, yeah, which translates to ruling squid in Latin, which is terrifying. The ruling squid, okay, you got it. You rule the ocean, therefore I'm not going in it. Very little is known about giant ruling squid, of course, because they're so hard to track down, but we did get a photo of one back in 2005 and a video of one in 2013. Both are equally as terrifying, check them out. Eyewitness reports from sailors also describe a 60 foot squid, so those reports don't sound as crazy crazy after you see this, right? That's also totally an alien, like 1000%. We can just nip that in the butt. Number six, magnificent alien. While the rest of the world was in panic mode, a new sea sponge was discovered in 2020. How fun and cute is that? Again, we're gonna poke around and touch him and then it's gonna go extinct, so enjoy him while it lasts. He was named Advena Magnifica, which translates to Magnificent Alien. The sponge literally gets its name because it looks like E.T. How amazing is that? And to be fair, it does look like E.T. An ROV found this sample over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean. They found it in what they call a forest of weird, which is an excellent nickname given what has uh, emerged from it. Just an alien sponge sticking their E.T. head out for some food. That's all we're looking at here. Christiana Costello Bronco, the researcher who found this deep sea squishy, explains the discovery in an NOAA interview, saying that as all of these organisms are intricately connected by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth. In this case, in the ocean. End quote. Yeah, this sounds like some Martian type stuff. I don't know how I feel about that. It's like, hey, we have no idea what's down below. Shall we continue searching? I'm like, no, we shouldn't. We should stop searching. This little guy is the key to humanity's survival. I feel it, I don't know. I just, something is, he's calling me. Number five, the rare whale fish. Located in California's Monterey Bay, scientists were able to get a close look at the fish with no eyes. Yeah, so he probably had no idea any of this was happening. 
Everyone's like, shh. Also, it's pretty unfair just to film him without his consent. He has no idea. This little guy relies on his other senses to hunt, obviously, and pick up its surroundings. This footage was from over 6,000 feet deep, so the lack of light just decided that the whale fish doesn't need eyes. Yeah, nature and history was like, you know what? Well, you don't need them, so we're just gonna take those back. It's like, what? Give them the choice, just in case. Let them look at a movie or a cool coral. It's great to get footage of them because whale fish are rarely recorded in the deep, let alone recorded alive. Number four, the smooth hand fish. Not to be confused with cool hand Luke, although that's also a pretty good time. The smooth hand fish was the first time in modern history where a marine type fish has gone extinct. Yeah, this fish was a shallow water bottom dweller and I personally love him because he looks like a Bowser minion, except I don't want to stomp on his head like Mario does, you know, I just want to keep him. He looks like he's in a bad mood all the time. I don't know, he looks like something's on his mind. He has a horn that protects Trudes out of his face, so I don't blame him, to be honest. Just 200 years ago, you would have seen these smooth dudes in the land down under in Australia. It lived in Tasmania's warm waters, and what made this fish so unique, as its name hints towards, is its little smooth hands. The smooth hand fish would seemingly walk with those hands along the ocean floor, using its fins as hands. So an angry looking fish with hands and a horn would walk towards you. Hard pass, never swimming again. Graham Edgar, marine ecologist at the University of Tasmania, sheds some light on its habits, explaining that these fish were homebodies. They didn't have a large habitat. They spent most of their time sitting in the seabed with an occasional flap, just for a few meters if they're disturbed. And at that point, they would just walk away with their hands from the drama, but because humans got involved, we don't see these guys as much anymore. Number three, Chinese paddlefish. The Chinese paddlefish was one of the largest primary freshwater fish in the world, commonly measuring around three meters or, you know, 10 feet long. These fish were native to the Yangtze and Yellow River basins in China. It was one of just two of the paddlefish family. Now, since the 1990s, this fish has been listed on the critically endangered list with the two main culprits, of course, being us humans overfishing and habitat fragmentation. Now, unfortunately, in December 2019, because of several surveys that failed to locate any presence of these species, it has since been declared extinct. Yeah, there's a little bit of hope that I'll leave, but so far it's, yeah, we can't find any of these. I hope somewhere there's a colony of these little paddlefish hiding somewhere and we just can't find them, you know? Keep hiding, don't let us find you. We'll just get up again. Don't let us reel you in or catch you. Sadly, it's believed that this fish went extinct somewhere between 2005 and 2010, but he's pretty cool looking, so we'll always remember him. Number two, the snapping shrimp. Okay, this is terrifying. These things are tiny and yeah, never again. This little guy can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you. That's how fast it is underwater. You will not see it coming and neither did this explorer. Here's a clip of a mantis strip punching through a diver's swimming gear. Yeah, right through their water shoes. Just like that, easy. Ow, that really hurt. Isn't that insane? They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, and these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers an hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created. And because this Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the jab, the following pop is around 200 decibels. So the sound alone from the attack stuns their prey. Or if they're lucky, it'll sometimes just kill them, which is honestly how I'd want to go. I wouldn't want to get punched by one of these things. Imagine one of these the same size as you. That's well, that's literally Mike Tyson, actually, now that I think about it. And finally, number one, the electric eel. Great song, not a great animal. You don't want to poke around these guys. Awesome, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Let's talk about them. The moray eel, first of all, don't do that. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. That's not ideal. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, are electric. Yeah, as its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Even if you bopped it yourself. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti, appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery. Yeah, it's named after the guy who invented the battery. This is an animal swimming around underneath us. It can release a shock of up to 860 volts. That's more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. The thing's powering all of these units. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry. Sick, we love nature. Isn't nature lovely? Awesome. Those are the top 10 terrifying fishing discoveries that we should have thrown back. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Keep being you, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.